the, the fantasy news <laughs> must, must flow. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a news story I have been wanting to cover for so long, related to the release of a book we have been speculating about since Fantasy News itself started, and that is going to be the third book in the King Killer Chronicles, The Doors of Stone. It seems that Patrick Rothfuss has followed through on his promise to read the prologue if you met a certain charity dono goal, and that goal was met. And so on Patrick Rothfuss's live stream, we had him quite artistically, quite well, quite high quality, narrating the prologue of the King Killer Chronicles third entry. Wow, this is actually finally making progress and maybe happening sooner rather than later. I even saw someone in my Discord who put like, I just feel in my gut, we're gonna get big book three news soon and BAM! We got it. Uh, I do not know when book three will be coming out. I do not know anything beyond just the prologue is finalized to the point where Patrick Rothfuss has been confident enough to read it on stream. That's just putting a little bit of pump in this heart in terms of being excited for the fans. And let me know what you thought of this prologue if you're a King Killer Chronicles fan in the comments down below. I am just always excited for fans when they're finally getting stuff they've been waiting for so long for. <laughs> it is weird to see how much Patrick Rothfuss is attacked online even by his own fans, but using his fans fervor for a charity cause and it meeting its goal and the fans getting something like this, I don't know, just makes me feel warm and wholesome and Christmassy. I'm feeling it today, okay? We're in a good mood. If you would like to hear this prologue yourself, of course, like every story we talk about today, there's going to be a link to it in the comments down below. I mean, sorry, no, in the description, not the comments. I just lied to you. Please forgive me. Well, the next story we're going to cover here, we had a post from the legendary fantasy author Steven Erickson about another entry in the Malazan series titled No Life Forsaken, the second tale of Witness by Steven Erickson. And my biggest takeaway from this is going to be that's an awesome title, but maybe even more importantly, how is Steven Erickson not verified on Twitter? He wrote Malazan? Maybe you heard of it, Twitter. I get why someone like me isn't verified, but this is Steven fucking Erickson. What? I don't know. I just noticed that and for some reason that's what stuck to the front of my brain. That seems absolutely ludicrous. He is one of the best known names in fantasy of all time. We also had Rebecca Kwong announcing her cover for their next book she's releasing. Babel. Looks like this. That's what it looks like. I still have a zit on my nose, god damn it. And the good news for fantasy fans just keeps on tumbling in because we had a tremendously exciting update for fans of Black Sun, and that is that it's going to be adapted by AMC Studios. Black Sun, at least from what I've seen, has been a smash hit among the sci-fi fantasy community, and seeing stuff get turned around for adaption faster and faster is just more and more impressive in the day and age of streaming, or occasionally, if something gets enough hype, there starts to be a bidding war over it, and then studios just go. It wasn't too long ago that if you heard a studio bought up a fantasy franchise, you'd be like, I hope that gets actually something done with in the next 30 years, and we don't just get some game to cash in on us the fans. But proving this point even further, The Atlas Six is being adapted by Amazon, the viral fantasy novel which got a massive push from social media to reach the level of success it has, is now going to be picked up by Amazon Studios, a studio that seems to be trying to hammer home its name as a staple hub for the sci-fi fantasy adaptation space. So neat on all accounts, and you know, for the fans, I hope these both turn out. <laughs> But now we're gonna get the first story I have something to kind of go meh at, and that's that we are apparently getting more Dragonlance novels from the legendary duo of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. They have confirmed that they are going to be writing and releasing another Dragonlance novel titled Dragons of Deceit, the first in a trilogy planned to be titled Dragonlance Destinies. And I do not like that title. I'm sorry, it just sounds like the definition of what an 
AI that was tasked to come up with a fantasy title would come up with. Dragons of Deceit, that is, you cannot get more generic than that if you tried. I have seen people just crazy pumped over this. It's apparently the first book we are getting from this duo since 2010. Ooh. And the fact that this is the start of a trilogy means that there's going to be hopefully hit after hit. But before we get into some Wheel of Time updates, a quick word from today's longtime friend sponsor. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's it's me, your FBI supervisor. And look, you're making everyone at the Bureau rather depressed. We keep looking at your browser history and between the obsession with news and porn, there's just not a whole lot we have to put in our reports, except that we really wish you actually could get this story you keep kind of typing up a little bit about and erasing and not committing to. So what I've done is I've scoured all of the Bureau's databases for the best possible option to help you get that story out of your head and page. And what we came up with is today's sponsor, Campfire. It's the ultimate writing tool for aspiring fantasy authors slash dungeon masters, not the sexual kind. I know your mind went there because of your browser history, but the other kind for nerdy stuff to use to organize all their stories in one spot. You got timeline stuff, plot B organizer, character arc organizers. You can connect them on webs. Really nice, interesting stuff here at a price. I know after looking at, oh gosh, you're so bad with your finances, but you can kind of name your own price here. So I think you can still fit it in. You know, look, you really can. It's a super progressive modern day approach to running a business. And it's a local, just fantasy business run by these swell boyos uh, with their own community. And I know you need to make some more friends. Let's let's be honest. So you can use this community in their Discord server to maybe accomplish that. Look, I've, I've started calling your dad and we have nightly talks about you. What, what we really need to get forth here is that you can, you have potential. Getting tools like this, today's sponsor, Campfire, is maybe the best way to do it. Okay, we, we care about you. Check out today's sponsor. <laughs> Now the most exciting fantasy news of the day for maybe me personally as a fan is going to be that the numbers are in and the Wheel of Time is by the numbers Amazon's most successful series in a season one to date. Now, of course, I like hearing that. As someone who's a fan of The Wheel of Time, even though I've had criticisms of the show, I want to see the series legacy be something that is looked on positively. So seeing this be, especially among non-book readers, a very successful launch for the series is great. And I hope the story is able to tell itself in completion and not cut off too early. Though I still have had a lot of criticisms of this show, and I just hope we see what I have started to see in season two of The Witcher, where it seems a lot of these fantasy shows that are quickly adapted for a season Season one don't maybe have enough time to mature and grow and season two is where they're really able to step it up and I'm hoping that same pattern will continue here for the Amazon Wheel of Time show because it does have room to step up and I get accused of just shilling for them all the time even though if you pay attention I am criticizing the show a lot in those walkthroughs but I can definitely add in a second layer here with the latest news we are getting for the usage of this franchise's licensing and that is that new world the Amazon Studios game is getting a Wheel of Time tie-in where you'll be able to get some weapons, artifacts, and clothing that look like they're from the Amazon Wheel of Time series. And that would be cool. I like seeing the Wheel of Time property used in stuff like this if it wasn't for the fact that New World is just dying as a game. And that's because Amazon Studios really screwed it up. I liked that game for a day or two until I realized it was one of the most redundant MMORPGs I've ever played played and that is saying something so yeah as a wheel of time fan i'm not as excited for this as i could be because it's like cool we're getting tied into stuff it's not nearly as exciting as like when mistborn got tied into fortnite recently because fortnite's one of the biggest games of all time that's not on life support new world's on life support i just had a lot of hope for new world and i really wanted it to be something great but it wasn't, and it could be updated in years to come to make it great, and I'm really tired of games doing that. Now, I cannot talk about the fantasy news this week without mentioning a bit of superhero news, something I normally try and avoid, not because I hate superheroes, just because there's so much coverage of it already here on YouTube, but I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that Spider-Man No Way Home has had one of the biggest openings in all of movie history. This sci-fi fantasy story 
story raked in an incredible $587 million worldwide in just its opening weekend, being the third highest opening weekend of all time. On top of that, the movie seems to be nearly universally loved, boasting incredibly high critical and audience scores. And personally, it's my second favorite Spider-Man movie, only barely behind uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Wow, and it might be my personal favorite MCU film. It just feels like the most matured, utilizing all the advantages of all the work the MCU's done without feeling forced or like it's trying to push a greater universe movie. I felt from them. It was really just a great time and solid all the way through. I was impressed, very truly impressed. It is almost as impressive as Disney not paying a lot of their authors they owe royalties to just to line their own pockets and neglect people who aren't even necessarily huge and famous and able to get by on the royalties they were getting from Disney because they were so small. And then they even went on to pay off the higher profile authors involved in this controversy just so the media would stop covering it and they would lose a lot of its momentum. Almost that impressive but not quite. Not quite. Anyway, that's the last story we're going to cover here today on Fantasy News. If you'd like to see any additional stories covered, go ahead and jump into the Discord server and post them in the Fantasy News channel. And if you would like to, and you may just see that story covered here next week. If I have two books out, bang and bang, that you can check on out as well as a merch store that is filled with wonderful designs that I am currently not wearing. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support We Dog Here Beyond That. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record.